hello friends welcome back in this video i will be telling you about arrays so this is an important concept that you should know about arrays because in your programming you will be needing array now and then so let's dig up more into array so first of all you can say why do we need an array whenever like you were using int a is equals to 10 and then let's i say ki you have to define 1 to 100 variables with their value respectively first variable as 1, second variable as 2, third variable as 4 and so on till 100. So you need to declare 100 variable and then after declaring those 100 variables if I say you have to update some variables then it would be a very monotonous and a tough job for all of you. To, so to avoid this circumstance what we did we need to create an array that can store same type of data type with only one name referencing so let's take here as name as a double r as array short form and then if here i need to create let's take the array type as int so what it is happening i can store multiple integer values let's say 5 10 6 4 1 0 let's say rather than so we can store multiple integer values in an array and we can access them and modify them as per the need so first of all you need to know the array indexing goes from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. The indexing goes from 0 and the first of all we need to calculate the length. So the length of this array would be what? 1 block, 2 block, 3 block, 4 block, 5 block. So length comes out to be 5 and the indexing goes from 0 to length minus 1 that is 0 to 4. Okay, this is a very basic thing. After that, we can how first of all we need to know whether array can expand or not. No, array cannot expand inside. So first you have to decide what is the exact size of the array, and after deciding your confirmation, if the size of the array will be this, then only create the array because arrays are of fixed size, they cannot change or we cannot modify their values. Okay, after this, coming on to the declaration, how arrays are declared, very easy thing. You need to write the type of the value that the array have to store and then the name of the array. Then these parentheses, brackets, square brackets in order to indicate that this is not a simple variable, it is an array. After that new int and then here you have to define the size, what is the size of the array. Okay, as of now let's take instead of writing size directly I will write 5. So in the computer memory what will happen? this is how my array would be made and a would be referencing to it and what the values it will store integer value let's put the value 17 18 1 2 3 and the indexing will go as 0 1 2 3 4 and what is the size of the array array will be size of 5 pretty simple none of this okay so it is not dependent that you can create int type only you can create your string data type of a array you can create your double array any but make sure whenever you create then those values are should only be held in the array this is a simple linear single dimension array you can say people say it's single dimension array as simple as that single dimensional array let's have a quick glimpse over it you can see here also I have created int a and the size is 5 I have declared it after declaring it what I did is what I started putting the values that is at the 0th position the first element is 10 at the second position it is 20 then 30 40 and 50 okay so I will just tell you over here only how is it happening so here first the array has been declared and initialized at that point of time in the memory it will be like 1 2 3 4 and 0 1 2 3 4 this is how a will be pointing to now as soon as i write a at 0 it means a at the 0th position you have to put 10 so i will put 10 then a at 1 so a at 1th position what i have to put 20 a at 2th position what i have to put is 30 a at second position i have done then third position i have to put is 40 and then 50 respectively this is how i have filled my array in order to traverse an array i need a for loop i will start from 0 because we know indexing goes from 0 until a dot length so a dot length is a function length is a function that helps me to calculate the length of the array what is the length of the array we know it is 5 so the loop will run till less than 5 why less than 5 because the last index is at 4 not at 5 
if you go for less than equals to 5 what will happen it will look for the fifth block but we don't have any fifth block present here so it will give us an error in order to avoid the error we have to go to less than length minus a dot length okay so now let's start accessing the error. i is equal to 0 i value is 0 we will come inside the loop since a i is less than a dot length that is it is less than 5 so condition is true we will come inside the loop it is that a at i so it is what printing at a at i a at i means a at uh, what is the value of i 0 a at 0 it is what 10 10 will be printed now i value will be incremented here and it will be 1 at 1 it will come in it will first check is 1 less than equals to 5 condition true so it will print a at i what is the value of i i is 1 so it will be printing what 20 then again i value will be incremented to 2 it will check 2 is less than equals to 5 condition true again so it will print a at i what is the value of i 2 a at 2 what is that a at 2 30 30 will be printed and then again i value will be 3 then 40 will be printed and i value will be 4 and then 50 will be printed respectively this is how you need to print your array okay so this is a very basic concept of your single dimension array you can try this at your own these are the basic concepts after single dimension array what we have is double dimension array what happens in double dimension array it is quite similar to the single dimension array but instead of only simple rows it have columns so it is a 2d array you can say yeah like this and i will create a 3 by 3 array first i will show you how it exactly looks then we will see the implementation so here you can see i have told you already array indexing goes from 0 to length minus 1 and here will be 0 1 and 2 so this is my and let's say the array name as a and we are storing integer values so this column will be positioned as 0 comma 0 this will be as 0 comma 1 0 comma 2 first we have to write the name of the row and then the column okay so here it will be 1 comma 0 1 comma 1 1 comma 2 and in similarly it will be 2 comma 0 2 comma 1 and then 2 comma 2 this is how you need to access your blocks after that you can just put your values whatever you want to put your values but in order to declare an array let's take a int type of an array now in order to indicate that I am using a double dimension array what I will do I will take two square parentheses which will make sure that I am using two square brackets that will make sure that it is a double dimension array now int a and sorry I wrote here wrong it's a and int and here I will just put it whatever size we want as of now it is 3 by 3 so we will just put 3 by 3 as simple as that this is how your array declaration goes after your array declaration you can just put up the values whatever values you want to put up so let's put the value start like a at 3 comma let's take it 2 comma 1 2 and 1 so what it would be second row first column so where is the second row here is the second row first column so it intersects here so here we will put value let's say 6 so 6 will be input so this is a simple way to input your value but if you don't want to input the values in this way then what you can do you can put your values in a and here and you can initialize them at is it first you open simple this parenthesis and then for the row write 1 2 3 this is your first row then close it then write it again 4 5 6 for your second row then you can close it and then you can write 7 8 9 so this is how you can declare your array as it is so what will happen 1 2 3 will be in the first row it will be 1 2 3 then in the second row it will be 4 5 6 and in the third row it will be 7 8 and 9 simple okay for the practical implementation i have created a array of an array of integer type you can see it's a double dimension array and i have initialized few values okay so this is the first row second row third row and after that you can see i have just used two loops first for the row and second for the column to print my array okay so let's quickly have a dry run and see how is this exactly working or how we need to work this out so what will happen here first my, my this entire array will be created and after this array will be created 
I will use the I loop to run for the rows and the second will be used for the columns. Okay. So for the columns we will use it and then simply it will just keep on printing them. For let's say I value is 0, the J loop will also run from 0 to less than 3. Okay. So first I will be 0, J will be 0. At 0, 0 what will happen? 0, comma 0. Now at 0, comma 0 we have first position that is 1. So 1 will be printed. After then we will go I J value will be increased and J will be 1. After J will be 1, it will come inside the loop. It will be I and J. I is still 0, J is 1. So 0, 1 is what? It is 2. 2 will be printed. Then I value 0, J value 2. So 0, 2, 3 will be printed. Okay, now the J value will become 3. As soon as the J value will become 3, we will come out of the loop. And we will come out of this J loop. We will change the next line. We will come on to the next line. You can see on the next line and then we will have a space here after that again i value will be 1 i value will be 1 now j will start from again 0 to 2 j will start again from 0 to 2 i value is what i value is simply 1 i value is 1 and um, then we will again it will be from 1 okay so it will be simply from 1 and 1 comma 0 will be what 4 and then j value will be 1 then 1 comma 1 will be 5 and similarly we will print this entire array so you can see this is how our array has been printed here we use i for the rows and j to control the column value as simple as that